Hi guys, this is Kubo. Welcome back to Curse of Monkey Island. This is the eighth episode of the games. And I must admit, um, it's been a while since I made a recording because I've had some issues with my computer. And the last time I made a recording, it messed up pretty bad. So I'm pretty much just going to fly through, um, through most of this. Um, I'm going to skip the conversations that I don't need. Because, well, I've done them twice, actually, and I'm a little bit annoyed by that now. So, um, what basically has happened is um, we have stranded here on Blood Island. The crew has, what's it called, committed mutiny, I think? Well, they refuse to do anything more for us, so we're on our own, as usual. Um, Alright, we don't need to go here yet. Uh, we need that egg at some point, but... We need to go up here. And talk to this crazy lady. Sadly, I cannot skip this part, so... We'll have to sit through it. I feel a dark presence coming over me! Hi there! Ah! Ah! Please! Keep it down. No screaming. Oh, my head. Poor guy, he is clearly hungover. Hi, I'm Guybrush. And you would be? I am Madame Zima, mistress of the ancient arts of precognition and augury, diva of divination. Cool. You're a fortune teller. Ah, that and so much more. Whatever. Tell me my fortune. I do not think you wish to hear. There are things of which a man is better off being ignorant. Oh, but I'm already ignorant of so many things. I want to know my future. No, you are not meant to know. I bet you just can't do it. That's the problem. You can't do it, and you're afraid everyone will find out you're just a phony. You know, I could put a curse on you that would make every morsel of food you eat become a ravenous cockroach inside your intestines, giving you the most excruciating death imaginable. So, are you gonna tell me my fortune or not? I'm not kidding. Okay, okay. She said cock. <laughs> What's in the cards for me? Fame? Fortune? Romance? Ah, very well. We will consult the cards. The process of reading the tarot is a very complex one. Each draw of the cards foretells an upcoming event in your life. When assembled, they will tell the story of your future. A future filled with twists and... Ah! Good lord, woman, stop that screaming. What is it? Is that a good... Ah! It is death. Well, in the tarot, death just means change, right? I mean, it's nothing to get worried about, right? I uh, sure, whatever you say. Now, please go. Okay, so we need to pick up this one. Look, a three-headed monkey. Ah! Then the prophecies were true. Where? I don't see anything. They must have run away. This is a very bad omen. And sadly, we need to get four more. There must be some mistake. Read my tarot cards again. There is no mistaking your fate, Guybrush. The cards do not lie. But if you Ashes, insist, get on with it. Once again, it is death. At least she's so convenient, she just pretty much looks away when I take it. I'm feeling luckier. Give me another tarot reading. Luck is not involved here, Guybrush. It is your destiny. Whatever. Let's see what the cards say this time. The card says death. Are you sure you're not dealing from the bottom of the deck? Remember that curse I told you about? Okay, okay.
So that's three. Hit me. Death. How many of those cards do you have anyway? And one to go. How about giving me one more terror reading? This is evil work, Guybrush. The fates have conspired against you. And no man can interfere. Your path has been determined. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I get your point. I really do. Just one more time for Guybrush. <gasps> Let me guess. Death? Leave this place. Huh? You are putting us all in grave danger. Your very presence will bring us nothing but sickness, tragedy, and death. Oh, yeah? Well, demon! Demon! Chill. Jeez. Okay, so let's head in here. This one and I think that's pretty much all we need for now. Uh, let's go talk to this guy. Hi, I'm Guybrush Threepwood and I'm a Stop yelling. I wasn't yelling, I was just oh, I've got a terrible hangover. Find something to clear my head and I can talk to you. And keep it down. Um, let's see if I remember... Um, yep, this one. That's the recipe book. And all of these are actually pretty fun. If you want to read them for yourself, uh, I suggest you just pause the video and read it through. They're pretty fun. And Last brief playthrough, um, I actually read them out loud, but I'm not going to do that again. I'm just going to pause for a few seconds to let you pause it. Here we go. One egg, pepper, half the dog, that bit ya. And... Yeah, page intentionally left blank. Good. Um, I don't recall us needing anything up here, so let's go on the hunt for these ingredients. Um, nope, nothing out here. There is some stuff over here, but I don't think we need any of it right now. We need to pick up this stuff. Oops. Nah. Oh. And we need to So now we have a dog that bit us, bit, bit, us, bit us, and we need to pick up its hair. Okay, fella, this won't hurt a bit. Hey, I guess it didn't hurt a bit. He must be shedding. Oh, his nerve endings are just pretty much dead due to high age. Uh, yep, we don't need anything else from here. We need to go to the beach, pick up that egg. Oh, actually, I forgot. I need to pick up a cushion, which of course is one furthest away. How could I forget that? It took me forever to figure out last time. But yeah, we basically need to put the cushion below the egg, to make sure it doesn't cr 
crack when I punch the rubber tree with the mallet. to go up to the windmill. Well, we can't really do anything just yet. Not that I could find, anyway. So we'll just pick up the pepper. And head back to the hotel. Here's a wild pepper for your hangover remedy. Shh. Thanks. This. I can't use the dog Oops. hair with that. This is some of the hair of the dog that bit me. Shh. Thanks. And the egg right here. I found this egg for your hangover remedy. Shh. Thanks. That's all the ingredients I need. Let me. Quietly mix up a dose. That's effective. Ah, much better. That guy looks kind of dangerous. Gee, thanks. Um, yeah, we have a whole lot of conversation right here. And I think we need some of it, or most of it. I don't know. and our soup restaurant resort empire that stretches across the Caribbean. Well, this was once our proudest resort. In recent years, however, hard times have befallen the family Good Soup and left me alone in this rotting hotel, the Good Soup Plantation Resort Hotel and Casino. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh... This guy, I'm just gonna go through all the conversation with. Partly also because I really like his accent. And he's polite. What do you know about the lost ring of Blood Island? Oh, that's a very sad chapter in my family's history. My great aunt, Minnie Stroney Goodsoup, was a well to do member of Blood Island society. Her one weakness was her romantic nature. She had a thing for pirates, one in particular. He came into port, she fell instantly in love. And they were engaged within the week. Then, on the eve of their wedding, he stole the fantastic Good Soup diamond from her ring and sold it to smugglers on Skull Island. She wore the empty engagement band on her finger until the day she died, which was not long after. Some say she still haunts the Good Soup family tomb. It is a sad story, is it not? Hmm? Yes, very. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Uh, could you repeat that? Don't be rude, Guybrush. Uh, hypothetically, how would one get into your aunt's tomb? I suppose you would have to die. Oh, crud. Makes sense, I suppose. How can I get out to Skull Island? Well, there used to be a regular ferry out to Skull Island. Used to? Ah, one cold night, so the tale goes. The Welshman set out in his dinghy. The deep fog around Skull Isle obscured even the moon, but the Welshman could see the distant light of the Blood Island lighthouse. When he'd rowed half the distance, the light in the lighthouse was mysteriously smashed, and the poor Welshman was lost, almost never to be seen again. Uh, almost? Well, there are those who say that late at night, if you stare into the fog long enough, you may see the flying Welshman rowing in his ghostly dinghy, lost for all eternity. Creepy. Um, got this one, this one, that one, so. How's business? Oh, I need another drink. Not good, I take it. Just look around. No guests, no food, no entertainment. Not even the cannibals will come here. My only regular is a spooky old fortune teller who gives everyone the creeps. Uh, no offense, Fedden Zeba. A pax on your first morning. Hmm, yes, right. Um, 
What happened to all the guests? After the place started to run down, they all checked out. All except for one, the guest that never left. Is this going to be scary? Because I warn you. Every night we heard strange noises coming from his room. Frightful crashing sounds that shook the entire hotel, each followed by the most horrible screaming and cursing. Then, one night, the sounds just stopped, but were replaced with a terrifying wailing and moaning. I had the room sealed and vowed never to enter that hateful place again. Would you let me into the guest room upstairs? No. It is locked for a reason. Let no man disturb the dark spirits who occupy that room. Why don't you try to liven the place up a little? Well, that's quite a story. Years ago, this hotel was one of the hottest destinations in the Caribbean. People came from around the globe to see our world-famous dinner show. You may have noticed the oddly shaped barbecue out on the patio. Well, no. Well, that barbecue was the centerpiece of our nightly entertainment. Isn't a barbecue the central attraction of most sophisticated nightlife activities? Maybe, but no one else had a barbecue like this one. Every night the guests would gather round on the patio, and at precisely six o'clock, You'd make chewy, delicious s'mores? No. Do you want to hear the story or not? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm fascinated. Please go on. Well, every night at precisely six o'clock, the volcano would erupt and the lava would flow down the side of the mountain and into the special trough that runs beneath the barbecue. The guests absolutely loved it. Isn't that some kind of fire hazard? Well, we'd get a case of severe third-degree burns every now and then, but everybody agreed that it was worth it. That volcano was a showstopper. One day, the volcano just inexplicably stopped erupting. Without our main attraction, the resort just lost its appeal. We've gone downhill ever since, and the volcano hasn't erupted to this day. Tragic. Okay, I guess that's pretty much it for him. Eh, that's a shame. Sorry I brought it up. Guess we can ask for a drink, but I'm not sure we need that yet. Maybe... This place sure is dead. Tell me about it. No guests, no food, no entertainment. If I weren't so insanely wealthy, I might get worried. Yeah, wealthy people don't need to worry about anything. Obviously. Eh, that's a shame. Sorry about it. Anyway, moving on. I'm off to explore the rustic charms of Blood Island. Um, let's head upstairs real quick to see. This is the locked door, and we don't need those. Let's head in here to see if we need anything. Uh, we can punch out this one. Not really sure why, but... I'd better get rid of this incriminating picture frame. <laughs> nice. Um. What? I seem to recall something about putting this one up here. Not really sure why, but oh well. Let's get out of here. And this is actually around the part of where I got to last time. Um, 
Let's see what we have here. Oh. Elaine looks like she's all right. Hang on, honey. I'm going to get yeah. you out of this mess. Yelling will help. That's for sure. Nope. That ring is really stuck on her finger. Shicks. They sure are bright. The bottle's closed. Oh. I meant to use this one. The bottle has a cork in it. <sighs> I can't pull the cork out with my hands. I don't want to cut that. I don't want to cut that. I don't want to pin that. I can't use the chisel with that. Oh well. Um, guess there ain't much to do right here. Windmill, uh, strange lights. Boy, it's windy up here. Well, this one could be useful for something, I suppose. Oh, I bet we need the fireflies for this, which could be a problem. It concentrates the light into a beacon for wayward vessels. Makes a man proud. This is where the lighthouse light would go, if it had one. With all these broken windows, it's no wonder the light blew out. It's broken. Okay, so I need a mirror and probably the fireflies in a jar. I'll get back to that. Let's go check out the. Whoa! Nice! This village is deserted. How curious. Doesn't look deserted. It's a table covered with different fruits and vegetables. Very classy. Tofu? You. It's a large cube of tofu. I surely don't think I've ever tasted tofu, but it just doesn't sound attractive to me. Well, I'll have to pick it up first. Okay, that didn't make me want to try tofu. It looks like kidney pie. I think that's. It's a hand carved mask in the likeness of Leroy, god of pudding. Yeah, putting me to God. I agree. Oh, oh, are these very cannibals from uh, from Monkey Island? Oh my goodness! I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. A pirate, huh? Well, then you must realize the inherent danger in wandering into a village populated by cannibals. Cannibals? You say that like it's a bad thing. Well, it's true. But we are no longer vicious and bloodthirsty cannibals. No? No. We underwent a paradigm shift in our belief system several years ago. Actually, I remember that from the first game where they told us that they had gone, um, gone vegan. Or rather, not so much vegan as cutting down the carbs. From meeting human flesh, basically. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna pick Paradigms? that one. We decided we wanted to live a healthy cannibal lifestyle. Oh! Completely cut back on our fatty missionary oh, jeez! Now I know what they meant. But Sorry, guys. The time I would have eaten you. Young guy like you. Not too much muscle. Hey! I'd probably marinate you in white wine for 45 minutes. Dip you in a light corn batter. Wrap you in banana leaves and bury you in a pit with a hundred hot coals. Let you roast overnight. Then I'd serve you on a bed of basmati rice with a garnish of shiitake mushrooms and shallots. 
But not anymore, right? Hmm. But but not anymore, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, right, right. You look familiar somehow. Perhaps it's because I look like a big lemon. Oh, yeah. But it's more than that. We've met before. Back on Monkey Island. See, yeah, I told you. Ah, uh, Monkey Island. We had a nice village there. Rent-controlled huts close to the good schools. Those were the salad days, so to speak. Till they put in that darned carnival. Carnival? Yes, carnival. Just as soon as they put up the first tent, whoosh! The whole place becomes trendy. Sailors coming in at all times of the night. That awful music droning on and on. And to be honest with you, I think the Midway games are rigged. Yeah, yeah. At night, it wasn't safe for a cannibal to walk the island alone. The carnival. Oh, I think he may mean uh, Big Whoop. The Chuck's carnival. Aren't you afraid the volcano will destroy your village? The volcano? Oh, no. Mount Acidopolis is completely harmless. We have curried favor with Sherman, the all-powerful god of the volcano. The god of the volcano likes spicy foods? Shut up, or I'll eat you. Okay. When we first landed on this island, the volcano god was most upset. Belching out smoke, vomiting up lava. It was disgusting, really. And potentially hazardous. We knew we had to do something to pacify the volcano god, and we assumed a good sacrifice would do the trick. Ooh. Reasonable assumption. But when we threw the sacrifice into the volcano, Mount Acidophilus erupted violently. We thought Sherman was upset at us, so we started making sacrifices every day. We tried everything. Fish, poultry, livestock, phenylalanine. The usual. Then one day, we tried Bree. There was a huge eruption that nearly killed us all. What happened? Sherman is lactose intolerant. Ah, uh, it all makes sense now. Now, Sherman is on a very strict diet. He only gets fresh fruit, vegetables, and of course, soy products for the protein so important to muscle building. Nice village you have. Thanks. It's not much, but we call it home. We've been doing our best to capture the classic charm of a headhunter village, while at the same time incorporating all the modern conveniences brought to us by the European explorers. You may have noticed our first state-of-the-art bloodletting clinic which has been cleverly designed to look like a traditional shaman's hut. Oh, quaint. Yes, we think so. So yeah, if you guys didn't figure it out, which you probably did, um, these are the people who killed the volcano and killed business for the hotel. Do you live in fear of the fruit fly menace? Not since I switched to a malathion-based cologne. Very alluring. Thank you. Do they hassle you when you go through customs? You have no idea. Nice village you have. Oops. Thanks. Damn it. No. Stand aside. I mean to visit the volcano. I'm afraid I cannot allow that. Our ritual offering is about to begin. Terrific. I'm fascinated by your quaint tribal customs. Postcards and slides are available in the lobby. Non-cannibals are forbidden from witnessing the actual ceremony. That's so unfair. Tell it to the volcano gods. I don't make the rules, you know. Um, when does the ceremony begin? It was supposed to have started half an hour ago. Even now, members of my village are preparing a human-like sacrifice for the volcano god. Human-like? Due to the delicate nature of the volcano god's digestion, we can't actually feed him real humans. So we sacrifice a human substitute. It doesn't really taste like a human, but it has a similar texture. So what's the holdup? We're still waiting for our featured guest. Who's your featured guest? He's an ambassador from one of the other islands. It's all part of a new cannibal outreach program between the villages. Apparently not all villages are as punctual as ours. Uh, I'll help you find him. What does he look like? I don't know. He should be dressed for the ceremony. And he'd better be a vegetarian. We specifically asked for a vegetarian. Okay, so I guess they are vegetarian. Um, Gotta run. that Bye. gives me an idea with that tofu thing. That looks like a mask. Exactly. My pirate instincts tell me I should keep this. I'll just walk over here so he won't see me put this on. The plan.
Yeah. yeah, that'll work. You'll never recognize you. <clears throat> Finally, you're here. Come on, we're late for the sacrifice. God of the volcano who resides in Mount Acidopolis! Accept this sacrifice we make unto you. In the form of flesh with high amounts of fiber and wholesome cellulose. Free of all fat and trans fatty acids. So that it might nourish you and bring your favor upon our humble village. And not upset nor agitate your ulcerative caldera. Okay, boys, toss him in. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you, and good night. Uh, so what am I supposed to do here? Um, should I be talking to someone? You feed the volcano mannequins made from vegetables? Yes, we do. Sherman isn't a strict vegetarian, but fatty foods can cause him severe indigestion. Okay, I'm not really seeing what I'm supposed to do here, so... Moving on. Oh, please don't tell me he has to walk all that way. Yeah, that didn't do much for us. Okay, I am gonna end the episode here, and hopefully this recording will mess up. Now that I got the game working at least. So, thank you guys for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye now.